Good morning, everyone. Welcome. God's grace. Ah, this is that gratitude month, Thanksgiving month, as I said, and grace was the word I chose today. Ah, grace. I think of grace when I think of nature and and the beautiful weather I had today. I did some gardening, picking dead leaves off my palm trees, and and then went to a great um, fall, the first fall f- uh, market they had at our development up at the community center. It was really well done. Went with some friends. It was it was good fun, and um, didn't buy anything. Got free ice cream from the police society, but. That was God's grace. Didn't expect to get anything free. Isn't it interesting how nowadays we go many places and we don't expect to find too many things free because our world is so um, different from many years ago. Um, So it was great. I had some vanilla ice cream. And then I thought about grace when... um, I think of unexpected good, like today was a, a good day with friends, that's unexpected because they called me and, and said, you want to go? And I had forgotten about the market and grace is that oneness with God and knowing that you're guided and protected and comforted. Isn't that wonderful? Um, in today's world, we think about grace. I think about grace and it's, it's truly needed. Um, the goodwill, the kindness, the benevolence, benevolence, all of those things are truly needed. There is so much. Um, I saw a quote in, on Facebook this week and I, I forgot to write it down and it talked about we, ha- we see so much anger, we've kind of tuned to it and it's almost like it's kindness and we've lost the full definition of kindness. But grace lifts us up. It gets us to acknowledge that presence of God within us. And it gives us that power that is needed to, to listen and be guided and lifted up by the grace of God. As it says in John 1, 16, from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. So think about the word grace as you go through this coming week and see what comes up for you and what does it mean to you um, as you move through each day and as you rest at night before you go to sleep. Think about that word and how it has shown up in your life. So let's pray. Ah, We give thanks for that presence of God that is right here, right now with each and every one of us. We hear that still, small voice through the hush and the silence that is ours to receive each time we take a moment or breath or time just to be here in the presence. So we give thanks. Not just this month of thanksgiving and gratitude, but every moment, every breath, we give thanks. As we bless our friends and family, we are truly blessed to have those who care about us in this world. Bless our neighbors and those near and far. We bless those we pass on the street, those we know and those we don't know. And we give thanks for their energy and for their blessings that are abundant in this world, whether it seems like it looks like it or feels like it right now. There is always love. There is always grace. There is always peace. These are not just platitudes, but they are there in our world, even in the midst of all that is going on in our world with wars and politics and anger and all the things that we don't like that's going on. 
we take a moment and breathe in and know that the sun rises and there is light. And as the sun sets, we rest and renew our spirits and get up each day knowing that we put one foot in front of the other and we make it a good day. For we are each caring, loving children of God, stepping into a world that sometimes doesn't feel safe, good, or loving. But we know with the presence of God within us, that presence that it's through us, born within us, lifts us up through all circumstances in our life and soothes our souls. So we behold the grace of God in all his mistress, mysteries. And we experience the grace of God in all the ways that we are guided. And we give thanks. And we experience grace in our revitalized strength in our minds and body as we awaken each day and move through each day. For God's grace is our protection. God's grace is our assurance that we are never alone. So we say thank you, God, for all the blessings that we receive. The blessings of God's grace in our life each day. Amen. Amen. The daily word today is prosperity. And I always say, oh, they tie right in. Well, prosperity is ooh, full of grace. Before I go into the reading, think about prosperity when you thought you, all you had was a nickel in your purse and someone paid for your groceries as you stood in line. Think of all the times things worked out when you didn't think they were would. That was the grace of God working through you, keeping you prosperous, prosperous in mind, body, and soul. So anyway, let's affirm, I release worry and no prosperity. Isn't that what I was talking about? I release worry and no prosperity. Perhaps the greatest gift of prosperity consciousness in is freedom from worry. It is knowing that as a divine being, I can draw from an infinite <clears throat> storehouse of divine ideas and prosperous, prosper myself in divine ways. This awareness helps me keep the things of the world in proper perspective. Like anyone, I will know times of plenty and times of lack. Understanding my prosperity as a spiritual truth and not the quality or number of my belongings or the amount of money I have in the bank gives me agency to direct my life. I am prosperous. As I affirm this truth again and again, I grow richer in divine ideas, the building blocks of everything on earth. See, that's grace. <laughs> and the reading today is taken from Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Yes. Say yes for each and every one of us are prosperous in so many ways. Ah, <sighs> so the song waiting I'm going to share today is gifts the Psalms may bring. It's a part of all the changes that are going on in our world right now that make us pause, make us think things aren't working out, make us not believe anymore. Just rest in the assurance that God's grace is with us. I've had 
had my share of heartache and sorrow, moments of sadness and lonely despair. grateful for the gifts that the storms may bring. There are always storms out there. There are always different things going on that we don't like. 
There is a lot of change going on in our, our world that we don't like. But as we step into each day, look for and be the gift in our world. There are many gifts. Seek them. And with God's grace, you will thrive and move forward in any circumstance. So this week, I'm going to use some Bible verses from the Old Testament. There is so much talk about Christianity and the Bible and whether it should be taught in schools again and who's the right one and who's the... Well, it doesn't matter. The ter- interpretations of the stories of life that are in the Bible there are to me and all that I have read about and read in the Bible, they are life stories. There are people moving through different experiences, just like we are now. It was just written a long time ago, interpreted many, many times, and gave us great teachings. And in those teachings, yes, there were a lot of storms in the Bible. But we always look for those things that I can lift us up because God's grace was present through the entire, all of the stories. So I've chosen seven that I feel that opens ourselves to God, the grace of God in its fullness. The first one is the God's grace infused in Noah's story. Remember Noah's Ark? I read something about building arcs and, oh, it's a whole lot of things going on in our world now in social media. Things are all over the place. But this one is about Noah, sir. You know, there was this, his name, sorry, I'll start with the beginning of it. His name, if we um, understand it from the revealing word and, and what it means, it means rest, calm, tranquil. This is a person who um, rests and listens and acts on the new ideas and visions and thoughts that are given to him, that come through him. They say in Genesis 6, 9, Noah typifies the consciousness at rest in God. It's like meditating. He is able to take on that calmness and that peaceness, peacefulness. To look beyond all that is going on in our earth, the destructions or the changes and all those things. And he looks to that presence within, that consciousness that was in him, that regulates him and lets him know what he needs to do. And that's what we do when we step into our consciousness of God and our grace of God. And he saw in his visions and his thoughts a flood coming and and to us in revealing word that means a baptism of spirit a washing away here of baptisms in church and stuff and they go into the ocean and what is washing away all those things of chaos and and anger and all those things so that flooding and that um that water that is a baptism of spirit bringing about equalism equalism in our equilibrium boy i'm getting a little tongue-tied today in our world and if we think of it metaphorically maybe that's what's happening i don't know i leave that up to god and i trust and so noah built this ark and he took his wife and his sons and friends and all sorts of people on that and they took refuge there And they rested in a spiritual consciousness, even in this flood, because they were safe, as we say, in this ark. And the ideas of the fullness of God and and what it can do for us as we um, have faith and trust in his guidance. And all of those birds and animals and each one of them that came on there are parts of who we are coming together in one place. 
where we each are filled with potential, waiting for whatever it is for us to um, bring forth into the world. We have the power. We have the strength. We have the love and all that is needed to write all that is going on, the rights, the right, the wrongs of this earth, to change it from war to peace, to change it from anger to love, to change it from chaos to calmness. We each have that power and those tools within us to wash away the chaos and step into the ark, which is the faith and that trust that all is well. And the verse says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and those eyes guided him. The next story I found was um, the story of Joseph. Remember the story of Joseph in the Technicolor robe? That was a musical and all sorts of things. Joseph was just favored by his father, Jacob, who gave him this beautiful robe. And he had 12 sons, but Jacob, um, Joseph was the 11th. But it was something about Joseph that drew his father. And all the others got jealous because, oh, I was the firstborn. Oh, I'm older than him. And all, you know, all of those things that go on with siblings. And so they got jealous. And what did they do? They got him in prison. They sold him into slavery and did all the different things that happened to him. But he had visions and he stayed positive. And through these visions, he was able to work with the Pharaoh and all these different things happened with the king, I should say, and happened to him. And when he was released, the brothers were afraid that he was going to hate them and not want them around. And um, But Joseph was a peaceful guy because God used difficult and trying circumstances on Joseph. But Joseph was the savior of the people. He was a good guy. He stepped out and still did good. And he still, he loved his brothers, no matter what they had done to him. Can we do that? That's grace. And the verse says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. So think of situations where things were going off and people said something to you and hurt your feelings and all those things. Remember, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. There are always lessons and things that we do and experience in life. Another one was Moses. There's lots of story about Moses. He always doubted God at every turn, yet God graciously guided him. You know, Moses led the people out of Egypt, but he was always arrogant and stubborn and doubtful, but God faithfully walked with him. And as time passed, Moses learned how to faithfully obey. All of us, some of us are hard at it. I have been, we all have been. And I'm not thinking of hard at it as bad, but we think we can do it ourselves. We could do it our way. And I'm sure our parents have said the same about all of their children because they're trying to teach them. And they're like, no, I'm going to do it, especially little two year olds and stuff like that. They're, they're learning and they want to do it their way. And we're trying to teach them the right way as we believe it. But they have to learn. They are arrogant and stubborn and doubtful. But they learn, and that's what Moses did. And God used this shepherd, Moses, to lead his sheep out of captivity. That's the people away from the Pharaoh into, into um, Egypt. And God chose to listen to and walk with Moses. Even through all that he had done, that's grace. 
that's grace. And Exodus 4.13 says, But Jesus says, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. He asked for some a replacement, but God stayed with him through all the ups and downs. So know that truth with all that's going on in our world. God is with us every step of the way through all the ups and downs, all the mistakes that are made, all the things that we wish we did better and didn't. They're all learning curves. They're for us to keep moving forward for we're always pardoned. We're always loved. We're always cared for. We're always guided for we are children of God. And the last story I'm going to share was Rahab. She bravely asked God to save her in spite of her past sins. And he did. She was a prostitute. She was a woman. She was just like anybody else. And many people do things to survive in a world that sometimes doesn't allow us to be who we want to be. Things could have happened in our past. Um, We could have lost our home, lost our job. All these things could have put this lady on the street. We don't know. Many, many of us say, oh, look at them. Well, we don't know what their life has been like. They could have run away from home that was abusive. And we don't know what happened that led them to the streets. And Rahab was in that same predicament. And she thought she was unworthy of God's grace. But somewhere along the line, she heard the tales of God and Israel. So when these two spies sought shelter in her home, she bravely bargained for her life. Because she knew ah, somebody was going to find out and things weren't going to work out for her. She confessed her belief in their God and asked for their mercy. And they gave it to her willingly to her and all of our family. In fact, she dwelled with the Israelites and faithfully served God for the rest of her days. That's grace. When Joshua 2.11, the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. God is always present in our lives, guiding us. Those are a few of the Bible verses and, you know, the New Testament talks more of Jesus. But these are still teaching lessons from the entire Bible is about stories of life and the hardships and the grace and the lifting up and the good times and the bad life, stories of life. And I've just shared a few of them. So think about that when you go through life. Many things that are happening now are so similar. Yes, things are different, but they're still the same because we are humans on earth, but we are also spiritual beings walking this earth. So trust and have faith in God and we'll get through any hardships. So take these thoughts into our meditation, the storms, that come in our lives, we always get through. So take a deep breath in and out and in and out. Relax in the assurance of God's grace. Allow yourself to be lifted to new heights with confidence and grace. fear and thoughts of lack 
think and speak positively and trust that the grace of God blesses you always. support you every moment of the day. Trust God's grace. Breathe. Take another deep breath in and come back to this place and this time. Filled with the power and the glory of God's grace right here. As we affirm, I live in grace moment by moment. Say it with me. I live in grace moment by moment. And we'll close with the prayer protection as always. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And we are richly blessed right now. Amen. Amen. Until next week. I behold the Christ in you. Blessings to each and every one of you.